Welcome back to Pop Goes the 60s. I'm Matt Williamson and I'm here to talk about the latest Beatle release. In the last couple months, I started getting the shakes. It's like, well, don't we, should we be getting a Beatle release here soon, you know? And sure enough, they have provided it for us. And what is coming out is the Beatles 1964 US albums in mono box set. Now this is a, this was a surprise to me. I didn't really expect this, but this was something that I, I don't think anybody predicted. And what is coming out are seven albums, the, Un the United States Capitol releases, and they include Meet the Beatles, the Beatles' second album, A Hard Day's Night, original motion picture soundtrack, Something New, The Beatles' Story, The Beatles' 65, and The Early Beatles. And there will be plenty of artwork to come with this, the original sleeves, Bruce Spizer's including some essays in this. Spizer always has, he does great work, so that's a, a plus for this set. So there'll be faithfully re re replicated artwork as you would expect. And many of the albums in the collection will be available for single release as well. And it says many of them, which suggests, well, maybe not all of them will be available for single release. So that remains to be seen. So anyway, it looks like a beautiful box set. And we've come to, I think we've become accustomed to these fancy box sets. And um, I'm kind of a sucker for the, the good looking box set myself, although I'm not gonna get this one. And the reason I'm not gonna get it is because I've got all these albums that are original and I've collected over the years and some of the original copies I've had and I've upgraded those a little bit and I may have an Apple label plus a Capital label. And I really don't care to add, to duplicate what I've already got. I've got a couple of these things and um, as beautiful as this box is, I'm not gonna do it. Now, one of the things that I noticed right away is that Apple has been talking about trying to introduce their products to new and younger fans, hence these remasters. So what we've been being told is that the, not the remasters, but the remixes, sorry, the remixes. And the remixes, I, meant, I guess, are better for headphone listening, uh, a better balance of the instrumentation and the voices. I get that. I think that's a slightly lame excuse, but okay, I'll buy it. We'll give them that one. This release can't be something geared toward the kids because it's not really something, it's not really headphone driven. You're gonna play vinyl and you gotta have a turntable for that. You can have headphones, but it seems to me that this is completely aimed at the baby boomers and the war babies, uh, two generations older than myself. And I think that they probably realize that there is a market for this stuff for those people. Now, I've, like I said, I've got all of these original in various conditions, and I don't really collect for conditions. Some, some people like to buy the mint stuff and really have that in their collection. I'm not one of those people, and uh, this would be an opportunity for me to get some really clean stuff on fresh new vinyl. But I don't really listen to the Beatles I don't listen to new stuff on vinyl that much. I typically listen to my original stuff. And I'm, it'll be interesting to see how these sell. One of the things that I think I can't help but bring up is how this stuff was released in the recent past. So I brought out a couple things here off the shelf. And one of the things that came out, this is the Beatles US albums. This is a box set that came out in 2014. And when this came out, I thought, again, we have a beautiful box here. And we've got these nice albums, CDs, and these little jackets like this. A uh, little booklet came with it. The problem with this was, is these weren't the United States mixes. And I thought that was a really kind of a dirty trick to play on us, uh, to come out with a really nice box set uh, on CD and not give us the original capital mixes, which many of us grew up with. I thought that these were also available in single LP release too, but I, I just did a quick look. I didn't see any of them, so I, I might be misremembering that. But I, at the time, I was, I was still buying CDs, and um, this set was a disappointment, although the packaging was very nice. And I really, I think people probably complained about this, that why would you go to the effort of releasing this stuff and not give us the original mixes? which is what is really advertised on the covers. What had come out earlier, and this came out in 2004 and 2006, were the genuine Capitol albums, volume one and two. So when this came out, 
I was really excited. And this was, I think, one of those things. This is before Apple really had a handle on the reissues, how we're going to do this. And this was something I think people were asking for. And it seemed like they reluctantly released it. And they released it in this very awkward box where you have stuff that comes on in either side. If you do like go like this, they fall out. The photography on the front and the packaging and the design I thought was subpar for a release on this scale. This release, this was four albums, Meet the Beatles, the Beatles' second album, Something New, and Beatles 65. This was in volume one, and it had all those capital mixes. There were a couple mastering problems where they had some wrong mixes in there that they did correct. I won't go into that now. But this, for somebody at the time, this was pre, this was, okay, 2004. <clears throat> So this was, I was still putting stuff on my computer and it was good to have this stuff digitized so I didn't have to transfer from album to the computer, which is very cumbersome. So then it took another two years for the volume two to come out, which we still have the same kind of packaging. Uh, but this, this was, this had the early Beatles, Beatles 6, uh, Help, and Rubber Soul. So I thought this was also a good companion to this. And I was surprised it took them two years to come out with this. In fact, I thought, well, maybe they're not going to come out with a volume two. So they did come out with a volume two. I thought, well, are they going to come out with a volume three? Which would probably include yesterday and today. Um, I guess you could throw the, the mono mix of Revolver on there, Pepper, Magical Mystery Tour. I don't know what that would look like. It never came out. It looks like they never intended to come out with anything. But at least we got the original... American mixes with the Dave Dexter drenched echo and folded down stereo, duophonic, all that stuff. We have that on here. So when I got these, I digitize them. They're on my computer and I do play them occasionally. Uh, occasionally I will play my original records too, not, not nearly as much. And I'm a little, sometimes I get a little lazy about putting the vinyl on the old turntable. So these um, were, I think, superior to this in that we got the mixes, but if you could, if they could have combined this, that would have been preferable. But these were released about 10 years apart. Uh, yes, 2004 and 6, 2014. So now in 2024, we're getting this box set of what they're calling the 64 US albums and model. Now, oddly enough, one of the albums was not even released in 1964, and that's the early Beatles. That was released in March of 1965. And um, it seems to me, and I guess the reason they did that is that's essentially the capital version of introducing the Beatles and those recordings of 63, you know the story. But because they were calling this the 64 U.S. albums mono box, and they put an album from 1965 in there, it seems to me that they won't come out with a volume two or a box set for 1965. So the next albums would be, if you can see them over here, I've got them listed, I've got... Beatles 6, Help, Rubber Soul, Yesterday and Today. Doesn't look like that's going to have a box set, although if it did, I'm sure people like you would buy it. I, like I said, I've been trying to hold, pull back from duplicating my collection, and as beautiful as some of these box sets look, I'm going to pass on them. And uh, I think there's still, it seems to me that this particular box set is really doing justice to the Beatles' work. It's nice to see the capital issues getting a little bit of love and getting some special treatment better than this and really more faithful than this too. So these things, I guess, are obsolete. One of the things I found, I forgot, these little guys did have like a promo disc that went to reviewers and to DJs. This is a volume two, and this was just a sampling of eight songs in stereo and then the same eight songs in mono so you could compare. There was a promo for volume one as well. I don't have that. I think I'm, if I do, I couldn't find it. <laughs> so anyway, and, and as I bring these off the, the shelf behind me over here, they're just collecting dust at this point. So let's talk about, I, I thought it was also a good opportunity to talk about these other box sets and just put them in some perspective. This was the Beatles stereo box that was the remaster that came out to great fanfare in 2009 and the mono version, in, also in 2009. I don't really, I did digitize these, they're on my computer, but I really am not that excited about these. 
you know, if you remember this, let me just pull this out. At the time, I was very thrilled with this box set. And this came out in 2009, and it was kind of just before the whole vinyl craze. The vinyl craze was starting up at this time. And this stuff was re-released on vinyl. But you had the nice CD boxes here. They each came with a mini documentary on the making of each album, which was really nice. So the packaging was great, but there's just so little focus on the CDs right now. And quite frankly, this remastered deal of 2009, and you may remember the, the advertising campa campaign that went with it, number nine, number nine, they released it on 9-9 of 09. <clears throat> That was all fun, but really this stuff didn't sound that much different than the 87 CDs that were released. I think, uh, and I think at the time we were just, it was, there hadn't been a new Beatle product on the scale in a long time. So we got a little bit excited. I bought it. Now I don't, I probably should sell it. I don't really have much of a need for it. Uh, I don't bring it out much. You can probably see the dust on this. It's, it's also been gathering. And um, the mono version I all, what I didn't like about the mono version, let me pull this out. I'm a big fan of continuity. So the, the CD uh, cardboard sleeves and little booklets they, they, came, they made for the stereo version were completely different for the mono version. So these were larger, very nice replicas, and they, they didn't have these gatefolds or anything fancy. It was just a mini album cover, but they were a little bit bigger. So I... I like these as well, but I would have liked to have seen them be maybe a little bit more uh, uniform. Even the size of the box could have been more uniform. What have I got in here? Oh, this is the back of the uh, packaging. So anyway, now that, and I mentioned that stuff with regard to the sizes and the continuity, because here we are in 2024, and we've kind of gotten used to this bigger box set treatment that's got the focus on vinyl. And so long as people are going to keep buying the vinyl, I think they'll probably keep doing that. And let's face it, some of these, I've got some of the box sets back here. In fact, let me grab this one here. I almost forgot about this one. The original box set here. This was from 1978, the Beatles collection. This was a, housed all the British Beatle albums plus a rarities disc. And I bought this when I was in high school in about 83. So immediately I had like all the albums. So I didn't, so I didn't really upgrade this until the stereo, the, the 2009 CDs. So um, my 87, did I call them DVDs? CDs. Um, my 1987 CDs that I bought, I, st I still have those. And those just look so crappy, but I still have them. I, I haven't sold those, but some stuff I've gotten rid of. So here we are with all these box sets. And... I guess I don't have an objection to an upgrade. And as time goes on and technology, we've got, um, uh, and obviously demand for doing a box set uh, totally makes sense uh, to, for some of us. And uh, it, it doesn't make sense for me in the sense that I would spend the money. I didn't see a price on this. They're calling it eight albums. Beatles for Sale is actually, they had the audacity to add, Beatles for Sale, or I'm sorry, Beatles Story, and they're calling it a two-album set. Well, there's almost no music on here, and uh, I, I did a review of this album just recently, and it's, it's very funny. It's kind of humorous to see how schlocky it is, how campy it is, and this, uh, to do something on the scale of a double album, too. I'll put the review that I did uh, after this. It's kind of an interesting story. Uh, the story of making this, the actual album itself, isn't that interesting because there's not a lot of interviews. I mean, you could have filled two discs with the interviews and they didn't do that. And, I mean, do we need this? Do we need to buy this on vinyl now? Do we need to have that on a, a fancy box set? No, probably not, but it sure looks nice. So what else can be said here? Um, the Rubber Soul box set is still hotly uh, anticipated. And uh, I think maybe by Christmas they will throw something else at us. I'm getting less and less interested in the Rubber Soul box set. I mean, my interest now has more to do with the outtakes that could be available. The other thing I'm hearing, I'm hearing about the anthology being the next thing to be, I guess, remastered and released. And unless they're adding new tracks to it that we haven't heard, 
that haven't been released on these other box sets, that would be the only thing that would interest me in just some smaller CD version. I wouldn't certainly, I never bought the anthology on vinyl. I didn't see the point of that. I don't particularly see the point of remastering or I, I've even heard of talk of remixing. I don't know if there's a point to remixing any of that stuff and I'm not sure if that's their intention. But I think um, the two songs that could that have been tinkered with a bit over the years are Free as a Bird and Real Love. And so the Real Love r remix or remaster, I'm not sure what you call it. I guess it's, it's a remix. It's enhanced. That was on the DVD set, the Beatles 1, I believe. So this stuff, I think it's been a little bit scattershot over the last couple decades. So maybe there's an effort to bring some of this stuff together a little bit more. Uh, the box sets for the, the albums pre-1966 for the Beatles, uh, I think that would be a great idea. I've always talked about doing a special box set for Yesterday and Today with the Butcher cover with all kinds of artwork. I, can, I envision it as a, an album with live music from 1966. I did a video on that. I'll put that at the end of this video too so you can check that out. And I included an album that never was for that. So there's all kinds of opportunities here, but I think they all appeal to us older geezers that uh, we'll, we'll buy something that we already have that's just beautiful, looks great on the shelf, and it fulfills uh, a need that we have, a uh, hunger that we always seem to have for the Beatles. So that's my, my little take on the new release, and I'll, I'll, I think this is a good opportunity for me to jump back into some Beatle reviews, and uh, I started doing the reviews of the early U.S. albums, and I think I'll continue doing that now. I've laid off the Beatles for a little while. Sometimes even I need a break. So anyway, in the meantime, check out my website, popgoes60s.com. I've got some really fun merchandise there for you. I also have a Patreon subscription if you want to support this channel in a bigger way. As always, I appreciate you watching. Make sure to like and share, and we'll see you next time here on Pop Goes the 60s.